Hello, my film boys and film girls. Welcome to Raiders of the Lost podcast. In this week's movie news, there's so much to discuss. We have Megalopolis, Rings of Power Season 2, House of Dragons, Supergirl. So much to go over. It was a wealth of information, of news coming out for film and television. Let's start off with Cannes Film Festival, where Megalopolis had its world debut. Francis Ford Coppola's self-funded $120 million picture that he's been trying to make for 40 years now has been shown and the reactions are insanely mixed and quite hysterical. It debuted on Rotten Tomatoes right now with 38% rotten from movie critics. It's described as some as a truly insufferable mess, mess, whilst others call it the crazy work of an ambitious madman. It got a seven plus minute standing ovation at Cannes along with some booze. Now, IMAX will have a global release, but it'll be limited for Megalopolis. The release date is contingent on U.S. distribution, but late September eyed for IMAX in 20 U.S. cities. Plus, it'll get a theatrical release outside of IMAX, of course. So we're looking at a fall release for Megalopolis. And honestly, the mixed reactions just make me even more excited for this film. I love Francis Ford Coppola. The King is back. He hasn't made a movie in quite a while now. And this is a passion project. He's self-funded. He's not by he's not playing by any rules of any studio. Not that he ever fully has. But I'm so excited to see what he has come up with. The trailer is really intriguing, visually stunning. I love the colors. I love the aesthetic. I love playing with time. And, you know, we're in ancient Rome if it never fell, but it's it's falling now as an empire. I'm so curious about this film. And really, the mixed reaction just makes me want to see it even more because critics today are so different than they used to be. Who knows if a movie like Apocalypse Now would have been critically received very well compared to if it was obviously when it came out in, what was it, 1979, 78? So... I don't give a fuck what the critics say about Megalopolis. I will make it a decision for myself when I see that movie. I cannot wait because Coppola is one of the best ever to do it. It's great to have him back, especially a project that he's funding himself and it's been a passion project for 40 years. Next up, the biggest news besides that is probably the release of the first trailer for The Rings of Power or I'm sorry, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Season 2, full title there from Amazon Prime. And honestly... The best part about this trailer trailer release was going through the comment section because it did not let down, did not disappoint. Not many people fully watched the first season of the show. You know, I I didn't make it through that full season of television. I know some people enjoyed it and, you know, great filmmaking involved. But for me, it's the writing. The writing's not great on this show. And I'm not probably I'm probably not going to watch season two because I did not really like season one. Like I said, I didn't finish it. I know a lot of you didn't finish it or didn't watch it. But I know a lot of people are anticipating it for sure. So it got its first release for its trailer. And it's going in competition right now with House of Dragon, Warner Brothers, and and Amazon. They're sort of just, it's the new Kendrick Lamar, the current Kendrick Lamar, except for, for the geeks out there, for the movie geeks and TV geeks, because House of Dragon also dropped their official trailer for season two. Now this... This is television that I'm looking forward to. The first season of House of the Dragon was excellent, gripping, and I freaking loved it. I cannot wait for season two to see some of my favorite characters coming back. And obviously the progression of the story arcs and plots from season one where it left off. I'm very excited about House of the Dragon season two. I think that's a TV show that's really doing it right. Next up, I think probably the biggest news of the week so far, in addition to what we've already talked about, is probably Supergirl. So Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, has gotten an official release date. It will release on June 26th, 2026 in theaters. And obviously, Millie Alcock, speaking of House of the Dragon, will be starring as Supergirl in this film. So just two years and one month from now, we'll be seeing Supergirl in theaters. Next up, Venom The Last Dance is coming out this year. We all know this. This will be the final Venom movie, according to Sony. That doesn't mean that Venom won't crop up in movies. I'm sure they're, you know, hopefully, ideally planning a Sinister Six movie. You can bet your butt that if they do, Venom will be in that. Whether or not it's Tom Hardy's Venom or someone else's, we'll find out. But this is the last movie. But that doesn't mean it's the last time we will see Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock and Venom character in the Sony Cinematic Universe. Whatever they call it. It's not the SCU, but there's another name that Sony calls their universe for comic books. 
Let's talk about something else that we discussed last week, staying on Warner Brothers. We have The Hunt for Gollum. We talked about last week. The title was announced with Andy Serkis directing and acting, doing the mocap as Gollum again, as well as Peter Jackson producing. Now we got a little more information. The movie will explore Gollum's backstory and delve into those parts of his journey we didn't have time to cover in the earlier films. And that's according to Peter Jackson. Also, Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens will also write the script. Who were the pens? They penned the Lord of the Rings trilogy so they know the franchise and the lore so well. I think that's great news for that story going forward. We talked last week about how Warner Brothers and Disney are combining their streaming services for a multi-platform deal. There's some news for some more. So Venue is going to have Fox, Warner Bros., and Disney. It's going to be a joint streaming service for sports. So joint service <laughs> joint streaming service from Fox, Warner Brothers, and Disney called Venue Sports. It'll put ESPN, TNT, and Fox Sports on an app together. This will release this fall. Also, Netflix, Apple TV, and Peacock will team up to form their own streaming bundle through Comcast. It will be offered as at a vastly reduced price. So all of the streamers are bundling up. They're teaming up because their numbers are so goddamn low and they're losing so much money. It's probably the last thing they can do to try to break even or turn a profit. And like we talked about last week, eventually they're all going to come together. It'll be called Cable. And we'll be back to where we were, ground zero of Cable back in the long, long ago. Staying on Warner Brothers, we have our first trailer and stills from Dune Prophecy. This was originally called The Sisterhood, Dune Sisterhood. Now it's called Dune Prophecy. And it's starring Emily Watson and Mark Strong. She, Emily Watson plays Valia Harkonnen. And Mark Strong plays Jakiv Emperor Javiko Corino. Obviously very familiar names from Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2. If you've seen the show, or I mean the movies, and read the books. It will release this year, later this year, on Max. Warner Brothers will be dropping Dune Prophecy. The trailer has me very intrigued. Obviously, we're building on all the worlds. All the IPs are getting verses and worlds. And Dune Prophecy is going to expand on that world. However, we're going 10,000 years before the time of Paul Atreides. So we're following the journey of the Bene Gesserit as their early stages of sifting through the lines and creating genetic prodigies through crossing bloodlines and it, i believe the trailer they talked about how they're trying to put a Bene Gesserit sister on the throne so it looks very game of thronies <laughs> that's a funny term game of thronies it looks very much like game of thrones mixed with with dune i'm very intrigued the production looks pretty solid great production design awesome huge sets wardrobe it's cool to go back into the dune world even though we just left it maybe it's a little too soon to go back but there's nothing we can do about that and I'm pretty much looking forward to this. Next up, we got our first look at The Last of Us Season 2. We got a shot of Joel as well as Ellie in the show. Joel's hair, played by Pedro Pascal, is a bit longer. He's been growing that flow out. He's got that hockey lettuce going on. And if you've all played the games, you know exactly what's going to happen in Season 2. This will be releasing next year on Max from Warner Brothers and HBO. Some really cool news that... I've been so looking forward to. So Kari Fukunaga, who directed No Time to Die, terrific director, one of the best out there right now. I've been so curious when he was going to announce or when we'd find out about his next project. And it's going to be called 77 Blackout. It's going to be a movie starring Mahershala Ali and Tom Hardy. It's a crime thriller that follows a night when the city that never sleeps lost power and plunged into chaos and lawlessness. So I'm guessing they're talking about New York City, because that is the city that never sleeps. Hell yeah, Kari Fukunaga, let's go. What an incredible director announcing his next feature. Next up, we have a Jesus Christ movie. So Oscar Isaac has been cast as Jesus Christ in The King of Kings, an animated movie. The film follows Charles Dickens as he takes his son on a multidimensional adventure to watch the fascinating life of Jesus Christ. Christ, this sounds really interesting. I wonder what the tone will be. Since it's animated, I'm guessing it'll be a comedic take, hitting that multidimensional world because that's so hot right now. Now Jesus is getting in the multiverse. I know what you did last summer. Of course, the iconic franchise from the, from the 90s. 
is getting a new movie, a reboot, which is going to be released on July 18th, 2025 in theaters. Jeffrey Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. are in talks to return. That would be pretty cool. Speaking of multidimensions in multiverses, Spider-Man New War, the character from the Spider-Verse franchise, voiced by Nicolas Cage, is going to get a series for Prime Video. According to what I read, it says live action Spider-Man Noir series for Prime Video, which would be pretty sick. So rather than animated, live action with Nicolas Cage in the role. That's pretty goddamn cool. And Steve Lightfoot in, from The Punisher TV series. And then Oren, Oren Uziel from 22 Jump Street will serve as the showrunners for the series. Pretty exciting stuff. I have a bunch of other release dates that just got released that we're going to just bang out because there's so many to go over. So first of all, Shogun, even though FX and Hulu said they were going to stop at one season, they weren't going to go any further. They're already now in the works on season two and season three of the hit TV series. So get ready for more Shogun coming in the near future. Barbarian director Zach Greger is releasing his next film, Weapons. On January 16th, 2026, this is going to star Josh Brolin, Julia Garner, Alden Alden Einrich, Austin Abrams, and Benedict Wong. It's an interrelated, multi-story horror epic about the disappearance of high school students in a small town. January 16th, 2026. Squid Game, we're finally getting a release date on that. Season 2 of Squid Game will drop this year in December 2024. We have some multi, I mean, some MCU releases. Daredevil: Born Again. It's going to release in March 2025 on Disney Plus. Agatha All Along next, which is now being called Agatha: The Lying Witch with Great Wardrobe. So this is a new title for it, which is the second time it's been retitled. Will premiere September 18th this year on Disney Plus, and then Ironheart will release on Disney Plus next year. The last two shows are interesting because Iron Ironheart Rap Production, I believe, mid last year. That show has been done filming. I believe they also did reshoots as well. Same thing with Agatha. That show has been wrapped filming for quite a while. It's interesting and odd that we're not getting released till next year on Ironheart, especially since they wrapped production in 2023. Crazy. Must have been a lot of reshoots. Megan 2.0, the sequel to the hit Blumhouse horror film, has been delayed to June 26th, 27th, 2025. The Black Phone 2, the sequel to the horror hit from 2022, has been delayed to October 17th, 2025. That's when you release a horror film, everybody. October! October release, 2025, for The Black Phone 2. I'm not sure if Ethan Hawke will come back or not. It depends on if it's going to be a sequel or prequel, but we'll find out once we get a trailer drop. I imagine it will just be a whole different character, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I have no idea. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 will release on December 5th, 2025. The massive hit at Blumhouse. Edgar Wright news. Edgar Wright is officially in talks to direct the Barbarella movie. This remake starring Sidney Sweeney with Jane Goldman writing the script. I wonder if he's going to make that before or after he makes The Running Man because we talked about a month ago how he has been tapped to write and direct the new version of The Running Man, the Stephen King novel, which Arnold Schwarzenegger starred in the live-action adaptation of back in the 1980s. So we will see which one he does first, if he does both or he just does one of them. Not sure. Man, this is tough without Anthony. I'm already losing my voice. But it's also because I go so hard in the paint, everybody, just for you all. Moving on to Happy Gilmore news. The King is back. Happy Gilmore 2 has officially been greenlit by Netflix. We talked about this a few times in the last month or so, how it's been in development and been writing. Adam Sandler will, of course, return to star as Happy. I wonder if he'll be a golf star, down on his luck, lost everything. Who knows? And you can bet your butt. They got to get Shooter McGavin in there. They got to. They got to. We have another John Wick spinoff movie in the works focusing on Donnie Yen's character, Kane, who we all saw in John Wick 4. I thought Kane was a really cool character. He is a blind assassin, insanely skilled. Now, filming begins in Hong Kong next year. This is officially going to happen. Some Tomb Raider news now. Tomb Raider, the live-action TV series, is officially moving forward at Prime Video with Phoebe Waller-Bridge set to write the series, but she will not star. So Lara Croft will be getting a new series. 
we have a new a new movie announcement here from let me check this out let me let me check how far in this episode we're cruising through this it's called listen to this movie it's called the entertainment system is down it's going to be written and directed by Ruben Osland who of course, did the great film Triangle of Sadness. The Entertainment System is Down is starring Kirsten Dunst and Daniel Bruhl alongside Keanu Reeves. And the film is a social satire set on a flight where the enter- entertainment system doesn't work, sparking major chaos. Ostlin has bought a Boeing 747 to use for the film. Sign me up. Such a terrific writer and filmmaker. Sounds like an absolute blast. It will probably be hilarious. Let's talk about something else. A new Gerard Butler movie, Empire State. Gerard Butler is in talks to star in Empire State Buildings in, in the Empire State Building action thriller. It follows a firefighter and a tactical officer who must put their personal troubles aside to rescue hostages and save the Empire State Building. Empire State Building is in New York City, in case you don't know. For those who are not from America. Legally Blonde. The great, sh- the great film is getting a prequel series, of course, and it's going to follow Elle Woods in high school. And next up, we have our first look at Nuremberg, starring Rami Malek, Russell Crowe, and Michael Shannon. The film follows a psychiatrist tasked with deciding whether Nazi prisoners were fit to stand trial for their war crimes. Really interesting. We've all heard of the Nuremberg trials or studied it in school, but we will be getting a feature film of those trials starring Rami Malek and Russell Crowe. Very exciting stuff. Also, speaking of movies, we are over $10,000 raised on our Indiegogo fundraiser crowdfund for our movie One Click. So grateful to everyone who has pitched in and joined the production, got some of those perks. You can send us any custom amounts. I'll put the link to the Indiegogo page in the description of this episode on all platforms. Also, it's in the description of our social media accounts. Thank you so much to all the people who are backing our movie. We're so excited about it. We're getting all the things involved in the movie together, all the props, the special effects, the cast. We have submitted for SAG, so that's really exciting stuff as well. There's still a million things to do. We shoot in July. It's coming up very soon. So we have to get everything ready to go within seven weeks or so. And then we're going to shoot a movie and blow up a freaking car. As you can imagine, it's not super cheap to do that. So we're very grateful to everyone who's chipping in. Again, we're over $10,000. We love to hit like 15000 by the end of May. So give us what you can. Any amount helps greatly. And that's all we got for movie news. It was just a, basically a bunch of release dates. Not too much going on in terms of trailer releases or anything like that. We had a few. But really, we just got a bunch of information on release dates and new movies and TV shows in the works Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Movie News on Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Everybody, be sure to become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews all over the platforms on Spotify and Apple. Share with your family and friends, and take care, everybody. Raiders of the Lost Podcast is a mirror image production. Sound mixing done by Jacob Kosler. Opening music by Chase Jackson.